cold front will move eastwards and southwards, bringing temperatures down by up to 12 degrees Celsius, as well as bringing rain or sun to most of the east regions. Chinese authorities will further promote the convertibility of the RMB in free trade zones as efforts to open the economy continue in 2016. Or Song, with the State Administration of Foreign Exchange, says the moves will be designed to open up the capital market without a prescribed limit, though the official did not elaborate on the meaning of that statement. Or's remarks followed the Central Bank's historic approval in December of RMB convertibility on the capital account with a limit of 10 million US dollars for the Tianjin, Guangdong and Fujian free trade zones. A new Gallup poll indicates more Chinese people felt worried and stressed in 2015 than in any year in the past decade. The poll says 40% of those surveyed said they experienced a lot of stress, a jump from 28% from the previous year. The Gallup report also says such feelings have increased sharply as Chinese residents' household income and personal savings suffered big drops last year amid China's economic slowdown. It says personal financial setbacks often lead to increased worry and stress. Swiss food giant Nestlé has ended its partnership with the International Association of Athletics Federations because of scandals surrounding the sport. The company says the decision was taken in light of negative publicity associated with allegations of corruption and doping in sport made against the World Athletics governing body. Nestlé added the scandal could damage its reputation and image. Last month, sportswear giant Adidas ended its sponsorship deal with the IWF. For CRI News, this is Bob Jones. This is People in the Know, a weekday forum for in-depth coverage of the news shaping China, the world, and your life. Yet another area of deep reform, and again, it affects the quality of life and pockets more citizens. Ni hao, this is Lin Xiaowen of People in the Know, bringing you the fourth part of our reform series. The topic today is social security. Not a system made from scratch, but a much better network which is feasible and cares for all. Yes, we do have various national policies already, as we have done a lot and achieved a lot in our four battles and more. But they only cater for low-level basic needs. Things turn critical when dealing with the needs of urban and rural poor. The massive number of interprovincial migrants seeking better jobs, better income, better education and better health care. As the government has promised to alleviate poverty for the last 700 people within five years in its endeavor to build a moderately prosperous society, a unified social safety network is a must, button line, against all rights. For this and more, my colleague Nick Lanning has thanked to Professor Xiong Yuegen, Director of the Center for Social Policy Research in the Department of Sociology, Peking University. Professor Xiong, thanks for having the program today. I'll give my pleasure to join this program. First things first, uh, before we come on to the ins and outs of the 13th five-year plan, broadly speaking, how would you describe the social security situation in China at the moment, and what kind of developments have we seen during the 12th five-year plan period? Uh, social security system reform uh, has been developed for several decades since the economic reform, and so far, Chinese government is aiming to establish unified uh, social security system to cover all people in the system and to improve for very fundamental broad coverage, data security, health protection and system stability. So this uh, system is aimed to be fully developed by the end of 2020. So it's a universal uh, basic security system to cover all populations. Moving on to some more, more details of what we can expect to see in the next plan, um, one of the most fundamental requirements of any social security system could be seen as the ability to prevent citizens of the country from living in poverty. Now, China has famously made very excellent progress on tracking poverty over the past 30 years or so, and it's pledged now to lift everyone in the country out of poverty by 2020. So what kind of steps do you think the new plan might take to address this issue? Yeah, according to the latest first proposals and the government's official statement about the application of poverty reduction in the 
of five fundamentals. And also, uh, it's five fundamentals within the, the urban areas and with the uh, employment base. So, five fundamentals is uh, different, uh, different, different uh, computational levels and levels of spending. Okay, so you've talked us through there some of the uh, recent changes that have gone through the Chinese pension system uh, over the past few years. But one thing that hasn't changed, in fact, since the 1950s in China, is the retirement age, whereas since that time, the life expectancy has increased dramatically, um, which means that clearly there's a huge, hugely increased number of retired people in society. So do you think the retirement age in China will be raised anytime soon? I believe there's quite a big opposition to this. Yes, actually, China uh, government has a law that we will extend the age of the retirement in the near future. So it has been determined by the kind of cultural uh, uh, participation situation, and that's because of the financial situation of country time. So we, we need to begin to, to be uh, having the different factors of what the market transition
sense making that earlier transition without even thinking of a kind of shift to a, a service economy. 